Hello and welcome to the CSN 3M Mindset Monday podcast. I'm Andrew Wade with Case Specific Nutrition. On this channel, we focus on the three M's, mindsets, myth busting, and mentoring, all as they pertain to health and nutrition. Before we dig into today's episode, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to share this with a friend or loved one. Do us a favor and share on your favorite social media, hashtagging spread the health so that we can continue our drive to help as many people as possible. This podcast is brought to you by DPP, our very own in-house group accountability lifestyle program. If you're looking to help manage and prevent chronic disease and you want to have an educational group-centered accountability, reach out to us through our social media or our website to learn more information about our year-long class. Today's episode, I'm going to be digging into emotions. Bum, bum, bum. Sometimes I feel like we tend to want to avoid these kind of topics, but this is a really, really interesting podcast that I have found over the years that I've counseled. Um, this is something that affects everybody that is trying to change their habits for the better. So there are four main components of an emotional environment or an emotional event, essentially. And I want to dig into those four so that we can better understand them, but then I then want to take some time to actually dig into how this can affect you. Because one of the things I've noticed is that there are these two radically um, opposite events. There's what we call the vicious cycle, which is what everyone's aware of. Uh, that's the most common one that we kind of talk about, the dreaded vicious cycle where one bad thing leads to another, to another, to another. In lifestyle, we tend to see that work stress leads to poor eating habits, which leads to bad energy, which leads to less activity, which leads to poor sleep, which creates this catch-22 where you're just things are getting worse and worse. That's a vicious cycle. The reality is it's opposite, it's what's called a prolific cycle. And it's where eating well gives you good mood, which gets you to exercise, which wears the body out and allows for deeper sleep, which allows you to wake up feeling more refreshed, which leads to better meal choices. And we can hear where those habits complement each other. And so what is the difference between a prolific cycle and a vicious cycle, especially in a world where we're constantly bombarded with stress? And the reality is it's oftentimes our perception. And so let's dig into these emotions for a second. The four components of an emotional response, right? First is your stimulating event. And we're gonna use a basic example here. Say somebody cuts you off in traffic. You're driving and someone cuts you off. That's that stimulating event. Well, then we have the second phase, which is our perception of that stimulating event. And this perception is extremely important because the perception guides the next two phases. So say you get cut off in traffic and you perceive that person is a crappy person, right? You get, you know, you look at it, you go, wow, like, you know, what an arrogant, oblivious person. So your perception is negative, right? Well, then that perception guides your feelings. So then you get and start to feel anger, frustration, and resentment towards that person. And those feelings are what guide your response, which is you honk your horn or you flip them off out the window or whatever it is, right? So we have our stimulating event. We have our perception of that event. We have the feelings that come from our perception. Um, and then we have what we call our response or our reaction. And so what we want to think about there is we can't control the stimulating event, but we can definitely control the perception. We can't necessarily control our feelings, but we can definitely adjust our feelings based on our perspective or our perception. And most importantly, all of this leads to a difference in response. So say someone cuts you off in traffic and you go, oh man, I hoped their family member didn't just get rushed to the hospital. That perception, instead of this, you know, them being a terrible, arrogant, oblivious person, giving them the benefit of the doubt and thinking, oh man, maybe something's going on in their life. Now, all of a sudden, your feelings towards them is gonna be empathetic instead of anger, which means your response is going to be to brush it off and move on with your life as opposed to get all hot and bothered and worked up. Personally, I'd much rather be unfazed by the obliviousness of others. So whether that person is actually just oblivious and arrogant or whether they're dealing with something, I don't want their situation to create anger in me. That is an example of how perception can trickle down, change your feelings and change your response. 
This is so vital. And again, little things like traffic, it's an easy example. But let's think about this from a lifestyle perspective. So here's a really common one. And it's part of the reason why there's a very, it's one of the many reasons why there's a big movement to remove, reduce um, the, the use of the scale when people are trying to change their lifestyle for the better, right? So let's say you are exercising and you've started this workout routine and you really like it. You're going to the gym and you've met people and you've got a good accountability group. It's some social time. You're taking walks in the evening. And again, you've started this prolific cycle, right? You have all these positive things. You're, you're moving more, you're stress outlets. And then as a result, you're eating a little better. All these things are helping you sleep a little better. You've got better energy at work. You're less burnout at the end of the day. There's all these prolific positive things going on. And a couple weeks into it, you step on the scale. And that scale is a stimulating event, right? Because that scale, that number means something in your mind. And let's just say the number isn't what you were expecting. Say you have been living in a way where you were expecting the scale to go down and the number didn't go down. So your perception of that is going to make or break this beautiful conglomeration of habits that you've created. You can either look at that number and go, oh, I wonder why that could be. You know what? I worked out yesterday and I'm really sore today. I bet my muscles are really swollen. Or you know what? I did have a bigger dinner last night a little bit later. Maybe my digestion's a bit off. Scale reflects a lot of things, right? No big deal. These habits are great. I know they're going to guide me where I go. Well, we can hear stimulating event, scale, perception, benefit of the doubt. Feelings, much more neutral. Response, much more neutral. Now for the more common one that we see, right? Scale doesn't go down. Perception, why does my body hate me? What's wrong? Everything's wrong. Nothing's going to change. Feelings, helplessness, hopelessness, defeated. Response, skip the gym. Don't get groceries. Snack on whatever. Go eat something that you think you're not supposed to. Can we hear where we just created a vicious cycle from our perception, right? And so understanding that all emotions are governed by a stimulating event, something that triggers, right? Our perception is the first thing that we get to do about it. It's the first thing that we get to change. And that perception is what's going to guide our emotions. And those emotions are going to what is going to be what guides our actions or our responses. And so look at your life for a moment and identify some of the areas where you might be getting triggered by stimulating events and it might be leading to negative responses. And usually most of us, when we first start doing this, we have to work backwards. So for example, say that that scale reaction is something you're experiencing that I just explained. Let's start with this. Yeah, lately I just haven't been very motivated. You know, I haven't wanted to work out. I haven't wanted to do this. So we're talking about sort of, you know, the end of this, your response. And we go, okay, well, why do you think you've been feeling that way? Well, you know, like I was doing all these things and it just like wasn't changing the scale. Okay, well, let's look at that. Is the scale changing the right perception or perspective or the right focus or the right measure? Wait a second, you're eating well and you're training with weights. Did you factor in that you're gonna be building muscle? And that means you're gonna be gaining weight as, and you might be also depleting or having body composition change. So you might be building muscle and losing fat, but it's causing a, a net you know, neutral on the scale. Oh, I never thought of that. Well, now I feel a little better so I'm going to keep doing my workouts, right? And so sometimes what we have to do is when we have these negative responses, if we're being resistant towards our habits or if we've stopped doing things that we liked doing, right? Prior to weighing on that scale, you were loving your lifestyle. It was worth living. You were doing all these positive things for yourself, which is to say that one, why is the scale the all be end all be all measure? And that's something that if you worked with a dietitian, you would dig into. But it's to say that if you've got all these great things going on and now all of a sudden we're seeing complete demotivation, that's probably something wrong with your perception. And I will tell you that time and time again, whether this is health habits, whether this is career, whether this is family, whether this is relationship, your perception is what guides a prolific cycle, which is, you know what? 
I'm gonna flip the perspective on this and I like this, I'm gonna keep going versus oh, I'm defeated and I'm gonna abandon this. The vicious cycle and the prolific cycle, we do have control over those things, but it comes with our perception. And so what I'll encourage you to do is identify an area that you might be feeling negative about. And let's work back through those feelings. Let's identify that perception that's causing that negative feeling and that negative response. And let's ask ourselves, what's its opposite, right? So in the example I gave you, it's the idea of stepping on the scale and being able to say, hmm, is this scale the right measure for my success? I have all these other indicators that are telling me I'm doing the right thing. Is this scale wrong, right? Is, am I not using this correctly? Maybe I'm not measuring my success appropriately. Or is the scale telling me something that I'm not considering? I'm going in expecting the scale to be a fat loss indicator. Meanwhile, I've changed my hydration status, which is water. I've changed my muscle mass, which is water and muscle tissue. I've changed my digestive processes, which is non-fat mass. So I've done all these things that have changed my non-fat mass and I'm expecting it to show me my fat changes. Hmm. Maybe my perception is off. And so if we can flip our perspective, if we can identify where we're seeing it through a negative lens and then ask ourselves, what's the opposite? What's the more hopeful? What's the more empathetic alternative? What we'll see is that we'll have our perception, we'll have its opposite, and reality is typically somewhere in the middle. And so we have it in our power to change our perception and that perception does change our emotion and that emotion does govern our actions. And so if you want to fall back in love with healthy lifestyle habits, it usually starts with your perception. Whether it's going to the gym at lunch and the perception is, ugh, another meeting I have to do today. Negative response, you heard the ugh. Response, I'm gonna look for a way to skip this. Versus working out at lunch, Oh my gosh, awesome, a chance to get out of the office and get away from my desk. You can hear the positive feeling, guess what you're gonna do, you're gonna do it. Our perception, our attitude about what we're doing or about the event that we're thinking about always governs. So take some time this week and make an effort to catch your negative feelings, catch your negative responses, and look for where the perspective is and try and see if you can actively flip that perspective. If you need some help with this, Case specific nutrition dietitians, that is what we do. Uh, I say we are the master of silver linings. We're the ones that help identify those stimulating events. We're the ones that help put a positive perspective. We're the ones that help people get their health habits on their side. So instead of them being obligations, they're opportunities like we've talked about in past episodes. So there you have it, the four components of your emotional response and the thing that you can do to better control your outcomes and create a prolific cycle. I hope you found this as interesting as I have over the years. As always, thank you for joining us on this week's podcast. We will be back next week with another Mindset Monday podcast. For now, be well.